Now, anti-government protesters in Egypt are ramping up the pressure on embattled President Hosni Mubarak as violence rages for a sixth day. More than 150 people are believed to have been killed in the uprising, with looting spreading across the country as the army struggles to restore order. RT's Paulus Lear reports from the Egyptian capital, Cairo. In the early hours of this morning, 10 people were killed while trying to break into the interior ministry. At the same time, thousands of prisoners have broken out of jails around the country. Among them are Muslim extremists, Muslim militants, and we're hearing reports that some of them have already made their way back to Palestine. Now, as a result, the Egyptian government has closed its border with Gaza. The real sense you get from being here is the sense of lawlessness. The police have completely abandoned the city. It's firmly in the hands of the army. And what this means is that you have these vigilante groups groups that have broken into police stations. Many of them are now armed. They have ammunition. There are people standing guard in front of their homes. The protesters are still out on the streets. The city remains in a lockdown and the protesters say they're going nowhere until Mubarak himself steps down. The Egyptian president has sacked his government. At the same time, he's appointed a vice president as well as a new prime minister who's tasked with forming a new government. But speaking to protesters, say, they say that this will go no way to pacifying and addressing their concerns. The international community particularly European countries and the United States, has called on Mubarak to implement reforms and to refrain from violence. There have been protests and demonstrations around the world, particularly with Egyptians showing support for their families and their friends back home. There were some WikiLeaks documents that came to light, some of them referring to cables as far back as 2007, showing that while in the public light the American administration has been supporting Mubarak, privately it's been supporting his opposition and this has raised many questions particularly among analysts who are now asking just how spontaneous these demonstrations in fact were. It's obvious that the US and the UK are behind the recent events in Africa. I don't believe in spontaneous revolutions when hundreds of thousands, millions of people come out onto the streets at the same time, taking into account there's been no serious or immediate change to their standards of living. For these demonstrations, they need coordination, support, leaders getting money from foreign secret services. Many of the experts are saying that these demonstrations were in part fueled by what we saw in Tunisia earlier this month, but that it's still too soon to say whether the deposition there of a president is going to be the same conclusion that is reached here in Egypt. The problem here is that there is no unified opposition voice. What we're seeing on the streets is a lot of people come together in defiance against Mubarak, but that opposition is fragmented. The largest opposition group here in Egypt is the Muslim Brotherhood, and they've been careful not to hijack these demonstrations. They don't want them to be seen as Islamist. They believe that the people have very real grievances that need to be addressed. One of the opposition leaders perhaps to emerge is Mohamed al-Baradeh. He is the former head of the International Atomic Energy Agency. He has said that he is prepared to head an interim government of court to do so, and he is no longer under house arrest.